the Galaxy Note 9 is not quite two years old, but in reality, there's not a ton that separates it from the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus and the S20 and all that kind of stuff. Well, no, no, actually, there are a few things um, that do separate it, and some of those things actually might make it better. The Galaxy Note 9 came out in August of 2018. It was my number one phone of 2018, and the only phone that I felt like was worth the $1,000 price tag that it had that year. Uh, it just is a super phone. What really got me thinking about the Note 9 and other older flagship phones really was the price to performance possible when buying these phones now whether used or new or anything like that. I've been doing live streams on Amazon since before the holidays and it's been kind of an eye opener for me. Buying a used phone used to be a lot more kind of a sketchy deal. I've been burned on eBay. I, I've got videos about how many times I've been burned on eBay. Uh, I'm buying something locally through Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist is just, I don't know. Not the greatest. But what I found as I was doing these streams is that you can get a Note 9 for crazy cheap from Amazon's Renewed program, and that really got me thinking. There's a lot about the Renewed program that solves a lot of those issues that I had before about buying used, and it makes it more accessible to more people. But I'm, I'll get to all that later. Things are changing quickly in the tech world. Well, in the world in general, and what might have been considered an old phone... <laughs> might just be the perfect phone for a lot of people in 2020 for a bunch of different reasons. Let's check out three reasons I think you should buy the Note 9 in 2020. Number one, number one, the looks. Okay, maybe I'm a little shallow, but the look of a phone really, really matters to me. The biggest concern I had with buying a Note 9 is that it might look or feel old compared to the newer phones. It's been a while since I had a Note 9 in my hands and yeah, I know that probably sounds crazy when you think about it being only 18 months or so old, but I remember really liking the Note 9 when I had it, and I was just worried that it would not hold up in terms of build, like just the feel of it and the look of it. I like the Note 9 so much that I got my review unit, and then I got, an I got another one later on after my review unit, uh, and used it for the few months before the next phone, si uh, the phone cycle started. But I've used a lot of phones since then, and how would the Note 9 feel and look compared to those phones? The, the iPhones, the Notes, the Note 10, the Galaxy S phones, all the other stuff that I've tried. Most recently, I've been using the Galaxy S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11, and I just was, I was, I guess I was a little concerned about would the Note 9 still feel premium? Thankfully, uh, I, I can say that yes. It does. It's a super solid phone, and the black on black that I've got right here is um, really a super slick color. I like this. If you run a dark wallpaper, you not only have this sort of super blackout phone that looks really hot, but it's almost seamless, and you mitigate what some people complain about with the slightly larger bezels that this phone has compared to the newer phones. It's still a slippery, slippery phone, though, <laughs> and I'm nervous carrying it without a case. I have to find my Note 9 cases, but this was an amazing year for the Note design, and I still feel like it looks amazing in, in 2020. <laughs> Numero two. Numero two, the specs of this one. I know everybody expects <laughs> it. There's actually a lot to like about the Note 9 and the specs in 2020 when it comes to, to the features that are available. Yeah, it doesn't have the latest and greatest Snapdragon 865. It's got the 845, but in the couple of days that I've been using this, I, I have not noticed the difference between the phones that I'd used before, the newer phones, and this one. This is snappy. It chews through all the work that I need to do. It does all the YouTube videoing that I want to watch or, you know, whatever else I, you might want to watch on your handheld. The 6.4 inch screen was amazing two years ago and it's still amazing today. Although I do like my iPhones as many people are really, you know, want to, to point out to me, it's really nice to actually watch 2.1 video on a full screen that doesn't have a huge chunk cut out of it and doesn't have a hole in the middle of it. There's no hole, like in Samsung's more recent offerings, no hole whatsoever. It's just all screen, which seems like it shouldn't be that big a deal, but it kind of is. It's really nice. The quality of the screen also cannot be overstated. It's impossible to really do justice through the online video forum that we're using right here, but it looks great. And there has never been a moment 
Not one time that I was like, oh, gee, I wish I had a 120 hertz. Never been a thing that I thought. Uh, it, yeah, it's a really, really nice screen. The camera is still fantastic. I've snapped a couple of pictures. I'm going to do more of that in my full re-review of this. I don't know. Here's the thing. When I see camera comparisons on YouTube and other places, I can see the differences in the pictures from one phone to the next, but the truth is that none of that really matters in everyday use. You're not going to be taking photos with four different phones at one time, to see, uh, uh, so you won't ever notice that difference. And as the old saying goes, an artist never blames his or her tools for the product. Honestly, if you struggle to take great photos with the Note 9, uh, paying a lot more for a newer phone is not going to make you a better photographer. Uh, learn to use the tools that you have and, and then be happy that you have them. As far as I know, the Note 9 doesn't have any problem with autofocusing as well, so that's a plus over some of the more recent phones. Along with all that, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which should get you through a whole day. I'm not gonna lie, older phones have, you know, if it's a used phone, it's lost some of its battery capacity, but the, this battery is big enough that you should still have plenty of juice to get you through a day. I'm gonna test the battery capacity over the next couple of weeks while I use this for my re-review and let you guys know what it is that I find. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to be able to see that next video. And number three, number three, number three, and this is actually probably one of the bigger categories, uh, what has been lost since this, the Note 9 first came out. As smartphones have evolved, we've lost a lot of features that frankly were big selling points to a lot of customers back in the day. The Note 9 has a surprising number of features that more recent phones haven't retained. And that has been, for me, a pleasant surprise in the few days that I've been using this. There are a lot of features, but I'm just gonna go over a few here. First, rear fingerprint scanner as well as iris scanner. Those are things that they don't have on the phones anymore. Coming from the S20 Ultra and having used the Galaxy V50 for quite a while, it was a, a, a joy to have the rear fingerprint scanner back. It's so fast. The phone just opens. There's no swiping. No swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Oh, man. Amazing. Notification light also is a thing here. Uh, a lot of folks complain that the notification light has been taken off of the more recent phones, and it's here. It's here, and you can use it the way that you want to if that's something that you want to do. If you miss the notification light, another check in the plus category for the Note 9. And it, it, this, I'm sure that you saw this one coming. The uh, headphone jack. There's a headphone jack. It's, it's, right, it's right where is it? It's right here. Headphone jack. Samsung did away with the headphone jack on the Note 10, Note 10 Plus last year, and that really, frankly, pissed me off. Samsung's headphone jack is always, they always had a pretty good headphone jack. I mean, not on the level of the LG V series quad DAC, yada, 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 but these Samsung headphone jacks were better than most, and Samsung actually has a pretty nice suite of personalization controls that help you get a better sound. You can test your hearing and, and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool what they have inside here for that kind of thing. And a lot of times, that kind of stuff has gone undiscussed in reviews. There is a lot more I could cover, and I will, again, in my full re-review coming soon to this channel, sometime in the next couple of weeks. So, again, catch that subscribe button and uh, bell notify yourself. But these few things alone are pretty compelling when you look at the Note 9 versus the more recent phones that have come out since this phone was released. It's still an incredible phone. It feels brand new. It doesn't look like it, it antiquated in any way. It doesn't look out of date. The quality of what I got from Amazon Renewed really surprised me too. There's not a ding, a nick, a scratch, nothing anywhere on this phone. It came with like peel off stickers on the, on the front and back so that it was protected. The phone has been updated to Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.0. So for all intents and purposes in using this phone, it functions exactly like any of the brand new Samsung phones, the S20s and all that kind of stuff. It just has some different features that some of those phones have taken out. And of course those phones have features that this one doesn't have, but six of one half dozen of the other. Now here is a bonus, a bonus point, and the real reason I bought the Note 9 from Amazon Renewed. Uh, how much do you think this cost me? Go ahead, how much? How much do you think this cost me? $350, yeah, $350. Yeah, the phone 
that I said was the only phone worth $1,000 18 months ago or so can be had in great, uh, amazing condition used for less than most of the mid-range phones out there that don't have near the, the, the functionality. I haven't even mentioned the S Pen, people. I haven't even mentioned this functionality. There's absolutely no way to get more for your money in a smartphone than $350 for a Note 9. I, it's a, it's a, it's crazy that you can do that. The more I thought about it, the more it actually blew my mind. You know, I, you get so much for that price. It makes paying $1,000 for the latest model seem almost foolish. Like I said, I'll be doing a re-review of the phone after I use it for a couple of weeks. We'll see if that exposes any critical weaknesses in using this older phone now in 2020. But as of now, the Note 9 renewed from Amazon is just about the best deal you can get on a smartphone these days. Uh, you know, personal preferences aside. I'll have a link to this phone down in the description below so you can check it out and see what the current prices are because they fluctuate all over the place and there are different options that you can buy. But what do you think? Would you buy a Note 9 renewed for less than 500 bones? If you're still using a Note 9, let me know down in the comments and tell me how it's held up for you over the time that you've had it. Uh, really, really impressed with how well this phone has held up, and I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below about what you think. Anyway, thank you so much for being here once again. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts! Ah! 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 Until the next time, I'm out.